Welcome to Vavork. In the previous videos, we've been discussing tagging. Now we're going to move on to another grouping mechanism called custom object groups. Welcome to our first video on custom object groups. Now this is a topic that we're going to explore across several videos, but in this particular video, we're going to begin by introducing what custom object groups are, what are they, what do they do, how do you use them, and additionally, we're going to show a demonstration that uses custom object groups that make use of something called relationships. But to get started, what are custom object groups? Well, custom object groups are a new and improved way of grouping objects in VRI's operations. Now, we know from previous videos in this series that there are four different grouping mechanisms. There's tagging, application groups, custom data centers, and now we're talking about custom object groups. Now, one of the things that you may have noticed in the discussion on tagging previously is that tagging is, in effect, a static way of grouping objects. It's good to tag objects because, like all the other grouping mechanisms, uh, tagging allows us to group objects together in a way that enables us to show VRI's operations, how we want our objects to be treated. But one of the drawbacks of tagging, one of our older grouping mechanisms, is that it is static in nature. Now, let me be real clear what I mean. Um, the, the tagging mechanism, as you saw in previous videos, does have some dynamic capabilities to it. For instance, all the tags and tag values that VRI's operations creates for you. Those are dynamic. Those will automatically update and populate and so forth. But did you notice in the previous videos that all the tags and tag values that we created in our demonstrations, those were all static. We had to specify exactly what we wanted in those tags and tag values. And once we did that, the assignment stuck until we changed them. So in that sense, the the tags and tag values that you create manually are static, which is kind of a bummer because uh, as your infrastructure gets larger and larger, doing things in a static fashion, while sometimes useful, in general, doing things in a static fashion in a large infrastructure tends to be cumbersome. So with custom object groups, you can, again, group objects so that VROPS knows how to create objects in a way that's meaningful for you. But unlike tagging, which is uh, more static in nature, custom object groups can be static or they can be dynamic. The custom object groups that VMware creates and our third-party vendors create and the custom object groups that you create can be dynamic. So let's take a look at these. Now, I'm going to give you a, a, a much more complete demonstration here in a few moments, but before I show you the demonstration, one of the things that I want to emphasize right from the beginning is that when you create a custom object group, you're going to set up criteria that specifies which objects belong to the group. And one of the key things that you're going to specify is you're either going to choose metrics, relationship, properties, or object name. And we are going to actually tackle uh, the second one of those, relationship, in this first video. In the next series, excuse me, in the next sequence of videos, we'll be talking about metrics, properties, and object names. But for now, let's focus on relationships. Now, you probably already understand what we mean by relationship, but just in case, um, in our VROPS inventory, or here in our, specifically our vSphere inventory, these different objects that we see, such as host VMs, clusters, data stores, and so forth, have a hierarchical relationship to each other. For instance, host ESXi03 is the child of the cluster called Compute-01. And uh, this virtual machine down here called DB-02 is a descendant of the data center called Site A Data Center. Again, relationships is a concept I trust that you likely already understand. And these relationships don't just apply to objects in the vSphere inventory, but these relationships also apply and are useful in custom object groups throughout all of the realized operations, whether you're working with vSphere objects or other types of objects. This relationship mechanism works for them all. Okay, now we know a bit about custom object groups, it's time to start doing some demonstrations. And in this video and the following videos, I'm going to handle a number of different use cases. Starting with, in this video, we're going to learn how to create a custom object group one that uses the relationship setting, 
in order to create a group of all the hosts that belong to a specific cluster. So let's go look in the lab environment. So here we are in the lab environment, and as you can see, uh, we see our usual five sections, and the first section that we're going to go to is the administration section. The bulk of the work that you do with custom object groups is going to be done in the environment section, but you ought to go to administration for one thing uh, up front. So let's go to administration. And as you can see here in the administration section, if we go to configuration, there's a section titled group types. Now group types is intimately tied to the custom object groups that we're going to be creating. One of the things that you'll specify when you create a custom object group is its group type. And as you can see here, there are a whole bunch of different group types that have already been pre-created. Uh, let me sort them by the username column here to get these ones uh, that were created by a user to show up on top. Um, these ones that you see down on the bottom that say adapter are custom object groups that V Realize Operations is setting up automatically, or the third-party management packs that you install can in set up their own custom object groups. But we're more interested right now in the ones that we see up above, such as department, environment, function, licensing, location, security zone, and service level objective. These, what is that, six or seven different um, group types for custom object groups are going to cover the vast majority of custom object groups that you will be creating. For instance, you might want to create custom object groups that group your objects based on what department they belong to. For instance, the sales department versus engineering. Or you may want to create custom object groups that divide objects based on what environment they are in. You might have one custom object group for your production objects and another custom object group for objects that are in your test dev environment. Uh, function would be things like uh, what function does a virtual machine play? For instance, is it a web server? Is it an application server? Is it a database server? Uh, licensing, you can carve up objects into groups based on um, licensing characteristics of the different types of objects. Location would be for things like when you have uh, physical data centers in different locations. So you might have a custom object group for all of your objects that are present in your um, California data center and another custom object group for all of the the uh, objects that are in your physical data center located in, let's say, um, London. Anyways, just picking some random names here. Security zone. Do you have a DMZ so or other type security zones in your environment? You can use this group type for that. And service level objective, um, that's actually an example we're going to be taking a look at um, in one of these upcoming videos. But that would be for when you have SLAs, uh, whether you called your SLAs gold, silver, bronze, or something else, that's what those are for. Now, again, these, uh, what is that, seven different group types are going to cover the vast majority of custom object groups that you create. Um, in my uh, five plus years of using VRISE operations, I've only come up with the need to to create a, another new group type um, in one situation that I can recall. Um, I'll show you that situation in a later video, so keep watching these videos. All right, so for the time being, we are going to work with the existing group types. So we don't need to do anything in group types now. And if you did need to create a group type, it's very straightforward. You just click the Add button, give the group type a name, and click OK. So very simple. But we don't need to create a group type now. Instead, what we're going to do is go into the environment section. And in the environment section, you'll notice if you go to the environment overview section, there are four tabs. Uh, custom groups, or I'd, I'd like you to think of this as custom object groups. This is where we're going to be hanging out in this series of videos. Um, but since we happen to be here, and since I'm not planning on creating videos to talk about these, other two next two tabs, custom data centers and custom application groups are created by going to these tabs. And inventory is not related to grouping objects. It's just uh, provides you a way of looking at your inventory. But for our purposes right now, we want to click on the custom object groups tab, which we've already done. And as you can see, there already are a whole bunch of dis different custom object groups. These are the ones that VRIs operations or your third party management packs have already created for you. And I'll show you how to use those here shortly, but I want to jump straight to creating our own custom object group. 
We'll begin by clicking the Add button. And as you can see, the first thing that we're asked to do is to pick a name for this custom object group. I'm going to call this custom object group hosts in cluster number one. The next thing that we're asked to do is to pick the group type. Now you should recognize these group types from just a few moments ago in the video. For our purposes here, let's say that these different hosts belong to different departments. It's not a shared environment. Instead, the clusters and the hosts belong to specific departments. We could choose any of these others, but for our purposes, we'll choose department. For policy, as you can see, we have a number of different choices. What we're going to do is simply select the Sphere Solution default policy because it'll work great for our purposes and because I don't want to go into discussing policies right now. We can talk about policies in some upcoming videos. So for now, we'll choose vSphere Solutions Default Policy. This checkbox determines whether your custom object group is going to be static or dynamic. If you leave the checkbox unchecked, your group becomes static, meaning you assign the members of the custom object group and those members don't change unless you come back and change the group definition. But we're more interested in having a dynamically updated custom object group, so I've selected this checkbox. Now in the next section, what I'm going to do here, first of all, is pick what type of object is going to be in this group. So I'm going to have a whole bunch of host systems. Now make certain you don't choose the wrong choice here. There's some similar sounding things, or if you want to make certain you get the right one, just type a little bit further. But this is going to be a group of host systems is what I'm specifying by clicking here. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is go to this drop down list. And again, this one should appear familiar because it's given us our four choices. In this first demonstration, we're going to choose relationship. And specifically, there are four different relationships defined here. We have child of, parent of, descendant of, and ancestor. What I'm going to do is choose child of because what I want to say in this criteria that I'm specifying here is that I want hosts that are children of a specific data center. Speaking of being specific, we can have the pattern uh, matching that we're about to be do be an exact match or a substring match. And additionally, we have these not operators to say is not, it, it could be anything but not something named exactly this, or it can be named anything except not something that contains this. For our purposes here, we're going to start with is. Again, that requires a complete match of whatever object I choose here. Now, if I want to, I could just type a portion of the name and hit enter, but there's nothing in my data center or my entire infrastructure called SA. Uh, there is something called SA Compute 01 and something called SA Compute 02 and a whole bunch of other things that contain SA. Uh, typically, when I choose to do an exact match, I'm going to pick something from this list, such as Compute 01. And then I have to specify which navigation tree the hosts are in, which should be pretty obvious in this case. Uh, they are in the inventory tree called vSphere Hosts and Clusters. And this alone is enough. I could hit the OK button if I scroll down. I could hit the OK button and be done with this. But there's more that we can explore here. For instance, you can add multiple criteria. So if I click Add, I can say, and oh yeah, the hosts have to have a certain metric. We'll talk about metrics and properties and so forth later on. But what I'm uh, trying to show you here is that you can have compound. Notice it's compound. And this has to be true. And this has to be true. If I want to, I can keep adding more and more and more, but all the condition criteria I specify have to be satisfied for an object to be added to the group. And obviously, uh, it's truncated here, but this uh, link here says remove. If I click remove, I'm back to just my one, one um, criteria. So we're looking for hosts that are children of children of a cluster called SA Compute-01. Now in an ideal world, this criteria will match exactly the objects that I'm looking for. But in the real world, sometimes this criteria matches uh, not enough objects. We may have missed them, or it may have included objects that we don't want, which is what these two sections down here are for. You can, for instance, uh, if we missed a host based on the criteria above, we could click the Chevron button for objects to always include. 
And then in here, through this uh, uh, inventory tree view, we can go pick a specific host that we do want included. So for instance, if we did not include, if our criteria did not match SA dash ESXi dash zero one and we want to include it, I can pick that specific object, add it over to the right side and add that object specifically, or I can uh, do other things such as adding that object and its children and or add that object in all of its descendants. But I'll leave it to you to explore the always include and always exclude sections here. But how do you know what this criteria matched? Well, that's what the preview button down below does. So as I'm going through these three different sections, setting up the membership criteria, the include and the exclude criteria, I can always at any point click on the preview button to see what my my um, specification is matching right now. These are going to be the members of this group based on what I've specified. Now notice, if you will, that what I'm matching right now is only hosts. Only hosts will be added to this custom object group and that's exactly what we want in this case. But if you wanted to create a custom object group that had more than just hosts, if you wanted to also be hosts in virtual machines or whatever collection of objects, you can do that by adding another criteria set. So here's our first criteria set. If you want to add multiple criteria sets, um, for instance, to be able to match more than one type of object, that's what this link is for. But ultimately what we're starting to do here is to get this preview list to match exactly the systems, in this case, the host that I want. So we want to match exactly the right objects. When we're done, we hit close. And uh, because we said dynamic, if a, a few days from now, or a week from now, or a month from now, we add some more hosts to that cluster, they're going to automatically be included in this custom object group because it is dynamic. All right, so now that we've defined our custom object group and it's matching exactly what we want, I just click the OK button, and back in the custom groups section, we should be able to find our new group. Where is it hiding? I don't see it here. Let me click refresh. Actually, I probably just need to scroll down, silly me. If I scroll down, there it is, down on the very bottom. Here's my new custom object group called Host in Cluster. And you'll notice right now its icons for health, risk, and efficiency are grayed out because we're waiting for the next five minute interval for uh, the next data collection to occur. But those will, gray icons will eventually turn to more interesting colors like green, yellow, orange, and red. Uh, if I want to see what's in this custom object group, if I click on host in cluster one in this list here, you'll notice that it takes us into this view here where we can see a summary of uh, what objects are in this custom object group. Uh, we can see all the alerts. Currently there are none for that custom object group. This would be a top level view of them. If I want to get even more details, I could go into the alerts tab. If I want to look at the metrics for all the objects in this group, I can do so here. If I want to do capacity planning for all the objects in this group, I can do so here. Uh, compliance does not apply to custom object groups, but I can, can see their events. And there's more. There's details, environments, and reports. All these tabs that you see here are now talking collectively about all the objects in my custom object group. Now let me go back again here once more. Again, down on the bottom of this list is where we found the new custom object group that we just created. Uh, please do notice, however, that you can also do these custom object groups by going into environment, groups and applications, and clicking on custom groups. If you click on custom groups, we have all of our different sections that we've seen before, plus, where is it hiding? Oh, uh, you don't see, <laughs> almost missed it here, you don't see hosts in cluster one, the new custom object group that we created because it's not a top level object here. If I wanted it to be a top level object, that's why you go over to administration configuration group types. Um, the group types are what show up at this top level. Our new custom object group is not a whole new type. It's a custom object group that's of type department. So if I go to department and move my cursor, there's host in cluster one. And again, if I select it here, I can see 
um, all the objects that are in there, their alerts and so forth. Again, right now it's still grayed out because we haven't hit a five minute collection interval, but if we wait long enough, we'll see this updated. Now that you know what custom object groups are and how to create one using relationships, join me in the next video where we'll talk about how to do so using metrics.